Dave Newlove is not going to be uh, able to participate. I believe he's probably on vacation. That's probably why. Okay. Who's and Councilor Hill did not accept the meeting invite, so I don't know if she's going to be participating or not. Gotcha. But I think you've got everybody else. Well, have we got a our quorum? I guess we do then. Yes. Yeah. All right, then let's call the meeting to order. The July 24th, 2020 Economic Development Commission meeting is called to order at 4 p.m. 4.02. And uh, I keep uh, pulling up uh, the wrong agenda. So I'm going to ask somebody else to tell me what is, well, the acceptance of the minutes will be first for June 24th. Could I have a motion? I'll, uh, Clifton here, I'll move to approve the minutes of Thank the um, June 24th. Right. Uh, Economic Development Commission meeting as presented. That's Dan Nash, I'll second. Thank you, Dan. Any questions on the minutes? Okay, hearing none, we'll vote. Have you all got uh, some way of uh, seeing where to go with Andy Key first and across the bottom? What I, what I would do, Mr. Chairman, if I, I would suggest you is just allow me to call the roll, which would save you a little bit of time. And then they Thank can you. Would you do that? Yes. Uh, before I do that, though, can I, I need to make that obligatory statement we, with all of these virtual meetings. If I could just do that before we take the vote. You can indeed. Uh, this meeting is being conducted in accordance with the provisions of RSA 91A and emergency order number 12 issued by the governor of the state of New Hampshire. It's being conducted virtually due to the COVID-19 pandemic. It is not practical for the commission to meet in person or to allow the general public to meet with the commission due to the potential of spread of, uh, of the virus. So therefore, it is being conducted virtually by Microsoft Teams link or uh, members of the public may also participate by phone by using the phone with the PIN number that's provided. If you're participating by phone, if you dial star six, that will allow you to uh, speak. And when you're recognized by the chairperson, you may do so. Um, so now to the roll, and I will call the roll. And if you would answer yes or no, if you're in favor of the motion, um, Andy Key? Yes. Okay, Chip Brown? Yes. Uh, Assistant Mayor Bilo? Yes. Uh, Dan Nash? Yes. Uh, Kevin Purcell? Yes. Uh, Chairman Steve Whitman? Yes. And uh, Vice Chairman William Dunn? Yes. Okay. Uh, motion passes, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. And uh, what is our first discussion? It's the discussion, discussion of the strategy for the West Lebanon the redevelopment. And I wanted Dave, uh, Dave he's, who's on here with us, to get into some detail with that. And just for the record, we have two absences, Dave Newlove um, and uh, Tracy, both I believe are on vacation and not available to participate in today's meeting. So Dave. Uh, yes. So coming out of the West Lebanon Vision and Charette study, there was uh, uh, an implementation strategies matrix included in that report. Um, we've talked, I've talked with the, with with Sean um, and Paula Mayville about how best to prioritize those strategies and, and key actions. Um, and there's a couple of different couple of different things in the in the works now. Um, for one, I have a proposal for a uh, a streetscape study to be done um, for for all of Main Street so that we can get a comprehensive uh, design that we would like to design to and, and build to. And then at that point, once we have a consistent design uh, throughout the corridor, we can begin to chip away and, and figure out how best to implement it. Uh, but until we have a consistent design, it's hard to know. Um, it's you, you can't just ask a, a new applicant to stick a street tree in front of their building because 
it, it, it affects everything else from sidewalk to on street parking and everything else. So that process, I have a scope um, from the from the uh, consultant. I need to review that with him and then get sort of firm it up and, and get a scope and a, and a proposed fee to go with that. My expectation is that that money um, money for that study could come from this year's budget. Uh, so it would not impact any of the capital funds that have already been appropriated for West Lebanon. Um, those those capital funds could be used towards implementation going forward. Uh, in addition, so that's that's one piece. The, the second piece is the idea of putting out a request for proposal uh, relative to the three Seminary Hill property. This is the, the property where uh, the city ultimately took down a building that was deemed to be too far gone for renovation for the uh, recreation department. In the, in the West Lebanon Visioning Charette study, uh, it was actually identified as as a p potential park space, um, as you know, for gateway improvements entering from both South Main Street and Seminary Hill. Uh, but during the presentation to the city council, a couple of members uh, noted that the city is already pursuing improvements uh, or the the demolition of buildings in the Westboro Yard, um, hopefully to be replaced with. Uh, potential green space there, a couple couple of acres potentially of green space in that Westboro Yard area, which might be a better you, which might make the three Seminary Hill property a better location for some new redevelopment. <clears throat> so, Sean and I have talked about putting together a request for proposal similar to what was done for the 20 Spencer Street property. Um, to, to see if anybody expresses interest in in redeveloping that three Seminary Hill property. Uh, it would need to coordinate with the improvements on South Main Street for the, the dry bridge and approaches to the intersection there. Uh, it may also be appropriate as we as we move forward to think about some deed restrictions for, for things we'd like to see or not see on that property, but those that's a little bit farther down the line um, in terms of fleshing out the, the RFP. The third piece that's that's that Sean and I have talked about is putting together uh, a subcommittee or, or some kind of study committee that can help guide this going forward with with more public involvement. Uh, and I think that's what we'll we'll turn back to with the discussion that we're having here today. Um, just two other things, uh, and I'll let Sean. I'll let Sean give a, the update on Westboro Yard because he's been uh, more directly involved in those communications with DOT. Um, but the other piece, Sean and I met with Recreation uh, and Public Works to look at the the property that the city already owns, just south of Bridge Street, opposite State Line Sports. This is was identified as a potential car top boat launch. Um, facility several years ago. It never got fully built out. So we, uh, maybe a couple of months ago, we met at the site to, to walk the site, see what's there, see what some of the potential possibilities are. Uh, it does not lend itself to active recreation because um, it's not large enough and it's not, it's not well, you know, the topography is, is difficult to to try to kick a ball around or throw a frisbee or something. Uh, certainly, there's access for fishing. We saw somebody walk by us with uh, with a rod and reel uh, when we were there. It is a difficult spot to try to put in a boat because it's it's not too far below Wilder Dam, and the the currents right there are somewhat challenging. So the idea of it being a formal boat launch is um, a little bit difficult. But we did talk about cleaning it up, making it a little more attractive as a gateway location for, for folks coming over from Vermont, uh, because it is one of the very first things they see driving across. And right now it looks like um, sort of a derelict property. Uh, so just cleaning it up, I think the public works director was going to be providing some information to Sean about you know, what that would take in terms of regular maintenance and regular costs. Uh, and the recreation department was going to see about 
the potential cost of some picnic tables or benches and things like that to make it a little bit more user friendly uh, because it is a nice place to sit um, and watch the river. So uh, that's my update on on what came out of the visioning charrette and, and what things I'm working on. David, can you also just talk about those two, the two parallel discussion with the two parallel roads? Yes. So as part of the as part of the streetscape study, one of the or I'm sorry, backing up as part of the visioning study, there was a concept about trying to have um, direct access between Railroad Avenue and Bridge Street, uh, basically a parallel road to Main Street that could keep some of the heavy truck traffic off of Main Street. So that would become a little bit more pedestrian friendly. It could also open up with new road frontage. It could open up new possibilities for economic development and revitalization. Um, so we were going to incorporate that concept and have the consultant flesh it out a little bit more thoroughly. Uh, the visioning study outlined, you know, just conceived of three different alignments, potential alignments. Um, all of which are sort of long term and lots of coordination between property owners and, and DOT, among others. So we were going to just have those have the, have the consultant flesh that out a little bit more thoroughly uh, and maybe maybe identify a preferred alternative or, or a, the, the most feasible way to get there. The other thing the street street streetscape study was going to look at was the idea of off street parking behind the buildings on the east side of Main Street, which could provide additional parking for West Lebanon, as well as freeing up space within the right of way for um, more streetscape improvements like wider sidewalks, possibly address some of the the grade issues because several buildings along Main Street, you have to take two or three steps right off the sidewalk up into those buildings so, so they are not accessible uh, for handicapped folks. Um, so the idea of maybe taking a little bit of a cue from what Concord, Concord Main Street did and try to address some of those accessibility issues at the same time as providing improved sidewalks, benches, uh, street trees, and the like. And David, what's um, so? What's the time frame that we think that would start the um, VHB would start the analysis? Uh, they would probably start that early fall. Um, I don't yet have a have a sense of the timeline whether that's a a three month project that's that's done before the end of the year, or whether it's six plus that that carries over into 2020 or uh, 2021 rather. Um, but I would I would expect I had a call from uh, the consultant this morning, um, just checking in on where I'm at in reviewing the scope that he put together. So I need to I need to review that with him um, and with Sean and Paula and get move that forward. But I would think in the next uh, six to eight weeks we could have that scope um, completed with a fee proposal and and have have them on board. So what we're looking for today is, is questions you might have and whether you agree with the approach that we're moving, the direction we're moving in, or whether that we should be doing something different. So we're hoping for some feedback today from you folks. This is uh, Chip Brown. Um, I was just uh, thinking about the comment of having the dual street um, connecting bridge and railroad, and I think that's a idea worth pursuing. I've always sort of felt well, there's there's kind of lost land back there. And uh, whether it is park like land or whether it's um, a developed street front, having a having a second access uh, really would help Main Street quite a bit. And help West Lab. Which, which one ship both of them or the one that's down by where bridge park is we call bridge park i guess the one down by bridge park <laughs> the idea of adding or or sort of connecting creating a new road between bridge and railroad yeah yeah okay and i i just am voicing my support for that i think that's makes a lot of sense on a lot of levels it depends on 
you know, uh, how it would be thought through and designed, but I think it it would um, help the downtown, Old West Lab downtown. Uh, this is Dan Nash. I'd like to add something. Go ahead, uh, Dan. I, I think that the, um, the ideas presented make a good framework for the redevelopment, but obviously the redevelopment's also going to involve private property. And uh, one of the concerns I have is the regulations. I ran, in, ran against this on a project in downtown Lebanon and Bank Street uh, with the conflict between the zoning ordinance and the site plan regs. When you have a downtown area like we do in Lebanon and West Lebanon, the central business district, um, the zoning ordinance allows for essentially 100% coverage of the lots. And the interpretation the planning board gave, I think, is hostile to the development of the central business district by requiring a 50-foot fire, uh, 50-foot radius fire lane behind buildings, and um, excessive landscaping. What most applicants do is they try to develop their parcel, and then if there's some land left over for landscaping, uh, that's what should be done. If the city's going to do a comprehensive streetscape, that's a good idea. It provides an infrastructure for the projects, but each project should not necessarily have to provide landscaping as if they were in the other zones of the city. Um, if you want a downtown to succeed, it's got to be very dense development, and it doesn't leave a lot of room for um, landscaping. And I think that these city ideas of establishing parks and parking areas will help provide the green space that's needed downtown without burdening the landowners with having to provide it and prohibiting some of the development that could help the downtown thrive. So to that, to that point, so what, what you're saying is that, that is an interpretation the planning board came up with. That's not necessarily what the plain language. What was that? So just just to, to reiterate that, Dan, um, our regulations um, indicate what you said it indicates, but they the planning board has made a different interpretation of that. I just want to make sure we're clear about what you're saying. Uh, well, I think something needs to be resolved. My recommendation would be to modify the site plan regs so they line up with the zoning ordinance. And uh, there should be clear exclusions for the central business district because we want them developed. So what you're saying is we need to make, make change to the site plan regs. Yes. So do uh, David, you want to jump in on that? I mean, if we're going to make some recommended changes to that, we need to frame that out and get that to them. Uh, yeah, just understanding that this is still a pending application to the best of my knowledge. Um, there is a subcommittee that's working on looking at the development regulations. Uh, not just downtown, but throughout across across all zones. And uh, that issue has certainly come up recently. And <clears throat> the idea of, of what the site plan appears, what the site plan requires, and you know whether or how to it should be applied in the downtown area. Uh, it, it is definitely something that the planning board wants to hear from the fire department on directly. Uh, and so I would imagine that's that's going to happen in the, in the not too distant future. But again, the, the the application that Dan is referring to is still an active application. So I don't want to I don't want to comment too much more. Right. So I, I guess the, the issue is if they're working on making change to that, and if the EDC wants to provide some input on that, we need to know when that would be. When's the time to do that? And we need to frame out. The EDC needs to frame out what it wants to say in that regard. If that makes sense. Yeah, we, Dan, we, Ash, I'd be glad to draft some language that I think ought to go in there. I think it's an obvious defect right now and it should be corrected. So it should be on top of your list. Hey, Dan, if if I may, this is Kevin Purcell. Um, I, you know, and I 
I don't have a clear thought here, but I, so that I don't want to talk about that project specifically. But when you have the CBD abut a residential zone, it's gonna. You, in my opinion, you're gonna you try to build a building that's so you know so different. The contrast is so great up against a an R one or R two, whatever. You you there's gonna be issues. Uh, you know, people in single family homes don't want to be against a, you know, I think just they don't want to be against a central business district or not that they don't want to be, but what gets built there. I think we just, we need to be careful about how we write those regs or, or give input because I don't know. I want to be careful what I say here, but do you, you, you understand what I'm saying, Dan? Like the, the, your 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 residential zone and your CBD specifically in that situation, you know, obviously there was some serious friction there. How do you create some sort of buffer that's gonna just in, in residential neighborhoods in general be acceptable or tolerable uh, if a site is built out at a hundred percent? That would. It, 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 a, a question for David Brooks. David, would it be worth, or have you already like specifically reached out to that? Or well, I, I think we, I think we have already contemplated the exact situation that's happening in the the new Lebanon downtown district that was created and approved by the council back in January. Anticipates exactly this situation where when a an LD zoned property is up against a, a residential zone or something that's not LD, yep. then additional uh, yard setbacks and height requirements are triggered so that you don't have, uh, you know, a, a solid wall right on the property line up against a residential zone. Okay. But the application that was submitted on Bank Street was submitted before that new zoning district took effect. And so, therefore, it's subject to the old central business district regulations, which are, I say old central business because they don't apply in downtown anymore. They do still apply in West Lebanon, and it is something we should address for West Lebanon for the, for exactly the same reason. Yeah. Okay, let's uh, let's uh, understand that we've talked that over and continue on with our other subjects uh, down there. I, I, I think we got to. Steve, Steve, one second. This is Kevin again. But so, David, would it be worth? I just feel like the Crafts Avenue, that whole neighborhood. I mean, they are a very tight neighborhood. I know people in that neighborhood. Would it be worth reaching out to them about this and uh, getting them involved so there isn't future issues? So they're they're part of the process. Uh, if you know, we we certainly can and will address yeah. and communicate with the surrounding properties. Um, the the West Lebanon community specifically did not want new regulations applied to them that came out of the downtown visioning study until they'd had an opportunity to have their West Lebanon vision uh, village sure. study. Sure. And so now that we've had that visioning study, now we can propose some of the concepts. It, they may end up being the same in a lot of cases, uh, but yes, we absolutely can and should um, take a close look at the regulations for that apply to West Lebanon. Do the same sorts of things: the design, the dimensional standards, uh, the uses. Are, is it? Are we allowing the things we want to see happen? Yeah. yeah, yeah my point being is just include, Wait, like, Kevin. Just include in the conversation so. We're not surprised when they all show up. Something's proposed. I think we've covered this. Let's move on. Yeah. All right. So um, back to the, the the specific planning pieces. So uh, David's talked about his plan um, in terms of um, the the study that we're going to be uh, in, embarking on. Um, I presume nobody has any disagreement with us creating the um, the committee that will review. The process, and that would be predominantly people from who live in that area, West Lebanon area, um, to sort of help shepherd this process through, and provide some advice on that, if that makes sense to everybody. Makes sense to me. 
Yeah, I so, think that's fine. So we're going to recommend that to the council and we'll get people uh, pointed to that and um, those folks can help help steer that particular issue. In regards to Westboro Yard, we did get an email last week, I think it was, from DOT that the project is on hold indefinitely, the demolition project, due to the state financial situation, the state government financial situation. Although the governor has said that he is optimistic that the stimulus bill that is before um, Congress, uh, that being the Senate in particular, in some form or fashion will get approved and there will be some monies for states and municipalities, which will, will help assist the state in its revenue shortfall. That remains to be seen. Uh, that's supposed to be acted on within the next couple of weeks before they go on uh, leave again. Uh, Congress goes on leave. But that remains to be seen. So it's on def indefinitely on hold, which is kind of frustrating. It took a lot to get that money put in the state budget. And if this we don't get authorization to a, a DOT doesn't get authorization to expend those monies before the end of the uh, the two year budget. My concern is we're gonna, obviously we're going to have to start all over again and, and get that money appropriated in, in the next budget. Be able to get this done after the work we put in to get it where it is, which is very frustrating, but that is simply the fact that's before us. So we don't know. So right now everything is on hold and we don't know when or even if for sure we will have the funds to knock that building down, even though it was appropriated in the state budget. So that's the cheering news I have for you in that regard. Any further? Uh, we're looking again, we're looking for more input here. If there's any more input in regards to our plan to move forward with uh, the redevelopment of, of the uh, uh, West Lebanon area. Sean, I have a question for you, and that is simply, uh, do we have a tax basis now that we're going to compare to when we uh, talk to the public about the uh, changes? Can, can you ask that question again? <clears throat> do we have a tax basis right now on which we are going to look forward, or are we all on, so far what we're developing is the uh, riverfront. Yeah, so unlike the downtown Lebanon area, we don't own a whole lot of land here. So That's we, don't right. have, we don't have the ability to influence that process, that, you know, other than the street improvements, potentially these parallel roads and the path to the Westboro Yard. So assuming we get the Westboro Yard, that's obviously, if, that, if the demolition occurs, if they turn the property over to us as we've asked them to do, there's the potential to create some green space and some public space there and that trail network. The only piece that we actually control is that three seminary hill road, which is pretty small. So whatever goes in there will have some impact, but it'll be limited in the overall picture. The trying to convince the private sector to do certain things is going to be a bit more challenging, especially with the limited tools that municipalities have uh, in this state to be able to uh, provide, shall we say, incentives for the private sector to do things on private property. Uh, so I, um, I'm not sure what else we can really do there, unlike the downtown Lebanon area where we do have public space that can be turned into private space and partnerships could be developed there. So we're, we're in a different spot. What I, envision, what I envision is a two-step process, one of which is step one, we have been, uh, we are the ownership of the riverbank, I believe. Uh, and we can do trails from uh, north of the uh, Route 4 to the south, all the way down to the uh, the plant down there, the water plant. Um, and then step two is we got to clean up, or they've got to clean up all of the material and turn it over to us. Um, is that... A simple outlook of what is uh, ahead of us. Well, that that I guess is a good summary of the picture because we don't own anything right now in terms of that riverfront, other than the area, the immediate area of Bridge Park. That's the only property the city owns. You know, we would, if if we get as 
if it goes as we have asked it, we will have control over the riverfront in front of um, Westboro Yard. Yes. If that goes as planned, yes. You know, we our plan would be to lease that from the, the state for a dollar for a year for for what forever or twenty years. I see. But we don't have that, of course, yet, because we we have stated that we want the state to demolish those buildings before we lease it and, and take over that part of it, and they have to continue to own the environmental issues that exist on the site. That's why we don't want to actually own the property. Right. Thank you. Other questions? Just, I was going to, this is David Brooks, um, just to chime in, there is also a sewer easement uh, that right. runs from the Bridge Park past uh, the Westboro Yard area all the way down to the treatment plant, as you mentioned. Right now, I believe that is exclusively for the sewer and maintenance and upkeep of it. It's not, it's not an easement that allows public access. Uh, but that is another possibility that could be investigated at some point um, to try to connect from Bridge Park over to the Westboro Yard area as a start uh, and then see if we can go beyond that in the future. Right, because the strategy might be to develop that walkway and then allow that to bring the public into the whole concept uh, and be more willing to finance an upgrade to the entire area to strategy at any rate so the only okay. other piece of that is uh barry schuster has started yeah. the process for uh getting the railroad to agree to discontinue the railroad that goes from riverside park to where the present mascoma greenway ends so he just started that literally this week that new initiative. He's going to do that gratis for us, which is really nice. Uh, but he just started that process and that's going to go on for a while. Um, so that that at least is, is moving now and is now moving forward. And we have, hadn't done anything on that. So that'll help make that connection to at least uh, the, the Route 12A area. Right. If we get that taken care of. So we're moving on that. That's a key connection piece. Okay, I again, I don't have an agenda, so I'm not sure where we're at. Right. Next thing is discuss strategy of UVBA, GRDC, and C11 marketing and exchange program. We are not optimistic we're going to get the grant that we had applied for. Um, it's in the works, but we're just not optimistic we're going to get it. But we'll, that remains to be seen. And you know, Tracy's on vacation, and that was the update she provided. So I don't think there's really much else to say about that. If we don't get it, We'll have to circle the wagons and decide what we're going to do next in terms of that marketing piece and that exchange program. How much was it for? Uh, I don't know because I didn't actually apply for it. Okay. GRDC did, and I, I haven't seen the final product. They had to get it in short notice, so I actually haven't seen it. Okay. And yeah. next item is discuss impacts of COVID-19 in the local economy and, and recovery strategies. So uh, I, I think I told you the last time the governor did approve us to allow us to enter into payment uh, plans with businesses and individuals. We have uh, worked with UVBA to send out notices. They've sent it out in their blast. We've done it over our website. And we do have a couple of businesses that did apply for it, but not many, I think two or three, and that was it. And no residents. And right now we have 99% of our property taxes for the first half bill have been collected. So there really aren't too many people out there that haven't paid their, their taxes, which is higher than the previous year, strangely enough. Um, but we do have a couple and those will be going before the Board of Assessors uh, next week. I think it's next Wednesday for approval. Uh, for 1%, uh, instead, of the, instead of the normal 8% uh, interest rate on their taxes, it'll be 1% that tax payment plan as long as they make the payments uh, on a schedule uh, between now and April 30th of 2021. So at least we provide some relief for those businesses that um, are hurting and apparently nobody else at least doesn't need it now. They may be more interested in the second half tax bill goes out and will still be available to those people at that time. Uh, but we didn't, uh, you know, we were expecting we would have quite a few more and we haven't had that many. So I guess maybe that's a good thing. Um, and then maybe some uh, did not receive the memo on it you know, they don't know that it exists out there. That's a possibility as well. Um, 
But again, 99% of uh, the taxpayers have already paid the first half tax bill. Good news. Um, th there continues to be more information in regards to our shopping centers on 12A. There are other parties that are interested, and we know we have a couple that are going out of business, but um, we have at least some reliable information that there are other parties that want to take over those spaces, or at least one of them. So that's good news. I don't want to get into the details of that because it's not public information yet. One of it is. We'll be glad to put that out. Um, over in one one B, the airport tech park that we're looking to uh, develop, we already have one group of business partners that would like to build in there. Have expressed interest and are waiting to see if the council finally approves the project to move further on that uh, and their activities related to um, to airport activity. But we're still working on the cost benefit analysis with that. One of the issues that has come up there, it's going to be over a million dollars just to put underground electric conduit in there. That's like 50% of the cost of the whole project. And whether that tips the scale to make it not cost benefit, uh, doesn't meet the cost benefit analysis is something that David's working on. And one of the things that I have talked about with staff, the city needs to think about whether or not that policy makes a whole lot of sense. We have these new developments that have this very expensive underground utility network that's put in with the, I, I guess the concept is that it makes them more resistant to disasters, uh, storms, but the reality of it is 90% of the electrical system is above ground and it's never gonna be put below ground. So I'm not sure that makes a whole lot of sense to do that and to force businesses to pay that cost or residential developments that all that adds to the the cost of uh, uh, of housing, and it makes it more difficult for businesses to move here because it's more expensive to do so. So the long term, I think that that's something that needs to be thought about whether that continues to be something that makes sense, good business sense, because uh, our housing costs are very expensive here as they are throughout the country. And again, does it make sense to add something like that that seems to have more of an aesthetic uh, uh, value than it has a practical value in terms of reducing the impact due to natural disasters. Yeah, uh, Cl Clifton, yeah, I was wondering about that too, and particularly um, in that location, uh, it, you know, in sort of a industrial type park, does it really matter if those utilities are underground, uh, maybe for this development, uh, just, you know, because it's not, it's, we're not going very deep into uh, off the existing road network, maybe, you know, a short amount of overhead utility poles uh, would be acceptable there and make a huge cost difference. Yeah, because I, I think that may tip it over the scales to make it not cost effective. I mean, we're, we're basically doubling the price of the project just to put underground utilities in. But I think it's something we need to think about in the, in the larger city issue, because I mean, that, that can add a huge cost to any housing project. Uh, or any other type of uh, commercial development in the city. And we've got to look at all of those things. Do some of these things that really add a lot of cost to these projects, do they make sense? If we're trying to get to the goal of providing affordable housing for the people who live here and those who are coming here, as well as does it make good business sense? Does it make us less competitive compared to other communities and other parts of the country when we add on these additional costs with, I would suggest, probably very little benefit at the end of the day? Yeah, look, I, I as a as a marketing guy, um, I would say um, it really should not have any um, negative impact uh, in industrial property. I think if you're talking about uh, a downtown Main Street, I think it would have a, a very large impact on perceived values and and overall tax dollar values. So I think it depends on where you're talking about, um, but certainly for airport industrial, I don't think it's going to change anybody's lease rate or anybody's perception of uh, interest in the site. People just want to have a a really uh, economic site to build on, and that's what they care about. Yeah, we. Yeah. we had an airport tech park advisory board meeting last night and Kelly Karen, uh, she's on that board and she was talking about that. There's a, it seems to be a lot more interest now in, in space in this area. People are, 
and we've heard this from the uh, our real estate folks as well, but now we've heard it from somebody who actually uh, leases space and works in space up that area. He says, we're getting a lot of interest from people in, in the larger metropolitan areas. They want to leave those areas, mostly for COVID-19 reasons, and it makes more sense to locate in the more rural areas or less densely developed areas. Um, so we're, we're hearing this from all kinds of different sources that there's a desire to leave the large metropolitan areas in Boston and New York and certainly in, in California. Uh, yeah, Sean, I'll, I'll echo what Chip said, um, you know, up in the West Lebanon Business Park, I don't think you have to worry. Um, in, in downtowns, I will say we had a West Lebanon charrette, and maybe David Brooks will remember. It was over at the Lebanon High School. I don't know, what was that, 10, 12 years ago, David? And one of the number one complaints that came out of it from West Lebanon was all the overhead power. And they said, walk outside city, side city hall and look up. There's no overhead power. And so that West Lebanon residents uh, are definitely aware of that. And I think it would be a, a huge bonus to get that buried. So you're not talking about 1B, but you're talking about the downtown area, right, Kevin? I'm just talking about in general, like you're going to have a, there's going to be a, a great value to having residential and, you know, your your downtowns with buried power. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. you're in a high value area, it makes sense, you know, meaning a dense downtown area. If you're, you know, uh, uh, up at the airport, it's not going to make any any bit of change in terms of people's interest in, in industrial property. Yeah, it sure would look a lot better on the main street there if we had the decorative lamp post and, you know, you don't have that pole sticking out of the ground there. Yeah. Like, a little yeah. Um, they're kind of nice. Yeah. As um, This is David again. As, as we talked about earlier, there is a subcommittee that's currently reviewing site and subdivision regs. Um, if EVAC, or sorry, EDC wants to uh, put those thoughts in in writing to to pass along that would be that would be helpful for that subcommittee and ultimately the full board to uh, to think about okay and also david that scope you're preparing for the streetscape plan i think that the power is a factor in that study and i think it should be analyzed uh, as to whether or not it's included in the streetscape Okay, I'll, I'll keep that in mind. Thank you. Uh, so in terms of, again, back to the local economy and recovery strategies, I really don't have anything else, any other tools in the tool belt, unless somebody else has any other thoughts. Uh, clearly, just, just sitting around the green here, I remember when I first got here, a heck of a lot more traffic. Now, we certainly haven't fully recovered. It's just not as hectic as it once was. Um, I mean, there, there certainly are improvements, but we're not at our full uh, regime of activity in this downtown area, I can tell you that, that's for sure. Uh, I, have to, I, have, you know, I work here, but I know Cliff does as well. Uh, it just isn't quite at that level it used to be. Um, any other thoughts on the economic, rec economic recovery or recovery strategies, reference COVID-19? Because I don't have any other plans or any other tools that I think I can use to influence the process at this particular point. I do remember one of the things on the agenda was something about the uh, how we were going to implement the uh, e, uh, EDC versus EVEC. So maybe it's time to turn to that. Um, I'm not sure I understand what you mean. <laughs> okay, I'm doing it from memory. That's the problem. <laughs> the uh, uh, there was a. I believe you had something on the agenda, or was that the wrong agenda? I was reading all the time. Well, that was a, that was transition from EVAC to EDC, which, as far as I'm concerned, we've already done. Great, forget it. That's good. Okay. Um, so I. I um, I think the next step was, is when we get this um, some sort of plan in terms of West Lab back to uh, back to you folks to take a look at. We're going to have that other committee review it as well, um, and we're probably going to want, like we did the last time, if if 
the council ultimately chooses to go out and do an RFP uh, for three Seminary Hill Road, we're going to want some input on how that's on, on, on the draft of that and then review the packets. I think that's something we should definitely be doing here is review the proposals that come in for that. That was very helpful. I think the last time we did that with 20 Spencer Street, I think we'd like to do that again. And at some point here, we're going to have some updates for you on 20 Spencer Street as well to uh, look at. And you have, what else do you want for future agenda items other than that? If we're, if we're going to have some written comment to um, the planning board, someone needs to kind of draft those out and it would be nice to review those and either approve those or not approve those to go to the planning board, maybe at the next meeting. Oh, this is Dan Nash. I can take a stab at some of the items. Which ones are you referring to, Dan? Uh, the recommendation to the changes on the site plan regs is that we have a committee studying in site plan and subdivision regs. Yeah, the underground utilities in particular, and there was also some discussion about the setback requirements for um, the fire lane and the uh, landscaping piece. Andy Key, do you have a comment? Uh, no, I, I was just um, kind of th wondering if is it is are we able to maybe get a uh, like a draft of what they come up with so then we can kind of, you know, see what they're proposing as well as instead of just us coming up with our own changes and we don't even know what they've done. You, you could, but here's the only thing with that. It's a matter of timing. You only meet once a month and, and they're going to develop their uh, proposals and if they have input from us as to how what we think they should they should include that will help them get to where they need to go okay I got you that yeah and I think then that makes sense so I'll put that down as a, a next agenda item is that we'll discuss um, a draft of what we might be proposing to the planning board and that will probably take some quite a bit of discussion to get through that Right. Okay. Anything else for future agenda items? Okay. Hearing none, I don't know. Okay. Is that it then, John? That is all I have on the agenda, unless there's any other matters that uh, any of the members like to discuss. Well, we do have a few minutes. If there aren't any, I'll move to adjourn. Okay. Thank you, Cliff. This is Dan Nash, I'll second. All in favor? Uh, well, you want me Go to get it? Get it to a. Call. Do you want me to, you want me to call the roll, Mr. Yes, Chairman? please. Okay, Andy Key. Uh, in favor of adjourning. Okay, Chip Brown. In favor. Uh, Assistant Mayor Bilo. Yes. Dan Nash. Yes. Kevin Purcell. Yes. Uh, Chairman yes. Steve Whitman. Yes. And Vice Chairman William Dunn. Yes. Mr. Chairman, the motion does pass unanimously. There we go. Thank you. Good night. Thank all. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Good night.